Everyone, welcome back. And this session is going to be about dynamic panels. If you've seen any of the sessions before, you probably noticed that all of them touched a little bit about dynamic panels. But in this one, I want to go a little bit deeper because by now you probably have a good understanding of what you can do with them. But let's explore it a little bit more to just understand of how to utilize it best. So right off the bat, as you can see, I have my Axure 9. and Axure 9, dynamic panels are treated slightly different. You can either drag and drop it from libraries onto your canvas, uh, just simply like that. Or you can just, what I do usually, I just drag in an object or some sort of mock-up or something which I want to treat as a dynamic panel, as a container, and, and then just convert it. So if I select, let's say, multitude of different objects, I can just right click create dynamic panel and boom it's created now i mentioned before that it's a good practice to start with giving it a name so every dynamic panel to kind of have identifier so you can actually target and apply the logic and this is actually what dynamic panel is special about is that you can basically then target it through code or the snippets or the logic afterwards so let's say if you add condition or an action to a certain item you can then say you know, target this dynamic panel, animate this dynamic panel, do this dynamic panel, uh, switch the state of dynamic panel, yada, 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 you know, all those actions. It allows you basically, you know, manipulate different objects better and easier than the, the other items you might encounter, you know, in your canvas. But let's crack on and just say that this is our uh, dynamic test, uh, quite simple identifier. We can, of course, you know, give it a tooltip, let's say. So what happens if a user mouse over it? We can add it to a group. Um, let's say if it would be something like radio buttons, you could group them up and select which one is selected, which one is not selected. And then depending on which is which, you're gonna be able to see and, and kind of work with forms and have like a toggle. But let's ignore it for now. Um, let's say what we want to really do is go inside dynamic panel. Now we created this kind of like a ghost container which handles our content inside. If we go deeper, we can edit it inline or we can just isolate it, meaning that everything else, uh, let me just demonstrate it better. Imagine if we have like a app with some sort of headings and different objects, some sort of buttons. Um, and then we have a dynamic panel for this bad boy. We would click in and we can just isolate and treat it on its own or just see how it relates to other items on the page. And this is a good option to just kind of ignore and, you know, not isolate it because you can just, let's say if you create another state in a dynamic panel, you can add, you know, other items and just not, you know, display it on top of the other items. And so these states, which I just did, it kind of allows you to just go from one to the other and it's one object but it has two different content types then we have something like this defined with dynamic panel we are able to skip or display different objects at a different time it could be that you want to make a slideshow which we covered in previous video or it could be that you want to make tapped content or it could be that you want to animate this content this is exactly how you would do it you would have starting state you would have ending state and then you would switch in between just to demonstrate it let's say what would happen if a user clicks it i would add a new interaction to the button or you could add it to any objects on your canvas so let's say let's add new interaction on click and something to do with widget so let's say panel state and by panel it means dynamic panel let's say we're just gonna make it select the dynamic test as our named dynamic panel and we're just gonna say open next i could just say you know do it state two but then it wouldn't loop and we kind of let's say for this example i want it to loop if i wrap it from the last uh, as explained in other videos it's just gonna loop it and you know we're just gonna repeatedly uh, shift instead of just stopping at the last one and I want to also animate it. Uh, let's do maybe a flip. As you can see, it automatically pre-fills other animations of the ending ones. And then you also have different options. So for example, if we want to loop or you have a slideshow and you want it to loop repeatedly when the user lands, you could just, you know, repeat that action every, let's say, three seconds. And as you can see, it would delay the first state change uh, automatically which I can just deselect if I want to 
I also can enable this show panel if hidden. So sometimes you might encounter that you do something with dynamic panels and it doesn't happen. And it's just because they're hidden. And imagine a good example would be something like a panel which appears after a user clicks on an element which slides in. And you probably would want to show it if it's hidden and then animate it instead of the other way around or animate it behind the scenes where a user cannot even see it. So this is the option you would do that. And push and pull widgets is basically would misplace other widgets if dynamic panel dimensions are bigger or smaller than other uh, items around it, which is kind of good if you want to, um, let's say you have a form where you want to pre-populate a contextual menu or contextual items, which would then you know push uh, widgets down below. This would kind of add the dynamic uh, capability, but let's ignore it for now. And as you can see now, we have that action, which is assigned to dynamic panel. Uh, we could also assign similar actions to, let's say, to different objects, but there wouldn't be a state. It would be a singular thing, and that's what separates dynamic panels, that you can have layers and then swap those layers if needed. And you can imagine that if you have a button, which we covered in a different session, you could have a Preston state as a layer, a mouse over state as a layer, and as a default state as a layer. And with a little bit of interaction set, you can actually set it and, and you know, and kind of animate it that way to swap it, which is one way to do it. So if we preview what we just did, and I click, as you can see, it shifts the content around. Um, a use case for that could be that we have some sort of view more content. An example, let me just show you. Let's say I just copy it and pasted it on, on by selecting the dynamic panel, but just imagine that you have a card on your mobile uh, type of device as a prototype, you tap on it and it gives you more information. This type of interaction could be used. Um, and just to preview that, if I click on it, it does the same as a button. And that's the magic and the power of dynamic panels in a nutshell. And there are just so many ways you can actually use them and there is no right way to do it. That's the beauty of it because uh, Axure provides, you know, with an ability to be flexible and kind of fit your needs and you can structure your workflow, whatever you need. But I hope this video is helpful as an introduction to dynamic panels. Stay tuned for more videos. If this is too basic, uh, just skip ahead a few videos, find a use case which I'm going to cover, which is interesting to you. If you like it, give a thumbs up to this video, share with your friends, you know, subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it and see you next time.